Welcome to Our City. I'm Alonzo Jones, singing for Mayor Bowich, and here's what's going on this week around our city. On Sunday, February 24th at 6 p.m., Mayor Bowich will attend the sixth annual charity hockey game featuring the Elizabeth Police Department versus the Elizabeth Fire Department at the Wanakel Sports Center, located at One Park Drive in Wanakel Park. Tickets will be $10 at the door, and all proceeds will go to the Children's Specialized Hospital. For more information, please call Dan Byrne at 908 764-8063 or Joe Alicio at 908-884-6344. And if you need more information concerning this event or any other events this week, please call the Public Information Office at 908-820-4124. And joining me this week on this week's segment is Stan Neron from the Department of Health and Human Services. Welcome, Stan. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, Stan, you wear several hats. So I said the Department of Health and Human Services. What's your f official title there? So I'm the Assistant Director for the Department of Health and Human Services for the City of Elizabeth. And okay. I'm also um, elected to the Elizabeth Board of Education as a Commissioner to the Board of Ed. Now, you and I were on the show together a few years ago, and since then your life has changed drastically. So A lot of things have changed, yes. You now married? Yes, I am. And you have a son. Yes, I do. I have a one-year-old son. His name is Noah Stanley Neron, and uh, he just turned one, actually, on January 15th, which is uh, also Dr. King's birthday. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And that just happened? That he was born on his birthday, or did you? Well, it just sort of happened. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so today's segment, we're going to talk about uh, African American History Month, and let's start off February's African American History Month. What's the significance of this month? Well, it's, it's extremely significant. Um, you know, as you know, we celebrate the history of Africans not only here in the United States, but throughout the world. Um, you know, it's known, um, it started originally, um, Dr. Carter uh, G. Woodson started um, Black History Week, which wanted to celebrate the achievements and um, accomplishments of, of black Americans and, and Africans of the time. And um, it's since grown to become not only a week, but a month. And we look at black history as something that's celebrated every day because there are achievements happening in black America and in the African diaspora each and every day. And it's a very significant month because um, not only celebrating the achievements, but being able to teach school children and children throughout the world and, and people throughout the world of the achievements of people throughout the African diaspora is so important because you get to see the value not only in the culture, but in the people and what they've accomplished and how they've contributed to society to make um, our society what it is today. Right. Now, in the 12 months of the year, how and why was February the chosen month? I think as educators, we have a responsibility to make sure that not only um, is it celebrated during February, but it's celebrated throughout the year. And, um, you know, in June you have Black Music Month. You know, you have um, Juneteenth that we celebrate in June. Um, you have uh, different celebrations that happen, you know, in January you have um, Dr. King and we celebrate um, his birthday. And then you also have the Kwanzaa celebration, which kind of sets the foundation for the year as to how we should not only um, set our lives in order, but also celebrate black history throughout the year. Well, over my years of studying here, and I, some people say it was Frederick Douglass' birthday, it was a major influence as to why February, and others say Lincoln, and there was other births birthdays that were significant? Well, there were a lot of significant things that happened yeah. in the month of February. But as you remember, it was a week. Right. You know, it was a week and, um, you know, and February a lot was taking place. So it was ideal to say, hey, you know, let's culminate it and, and create a, a, a month around um, black history. And the celebration used to be just a week long, correct? Yeah, just a week long. And when did it move from a week to a month? During the Civil Rights Movement, when they wanted to um, really start celebrating, you know, more um, black history and really right. implement it in the schools and, and create more of a, uh, uh, of a presence of, of black right. history. And this didn't take place to about 1969, 70, yeah. that it transpired from exactly. a week to a month. Exactly. So in my younger years, I'm thinking Black History Month started from day one with Carter G. Woodson. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. But it didn't happen until... No, it didn't happen too much later until after, you know, um, people were really advocating to get more history taught in schools and more history taught throughout the time because, you know, you can't put black history of people throughout the, the world and, and especially the achievements here in America, you can't sum that all up in a week. 
you know, that's something that's going to take beyond a month and also beyond, um, you know, it's a lifetime of education. Right. It's funny you should say that because I know as a child, what I was taught in school was very, very minimal. And until, you know, fortunately my mother worked in the library and I had went there, opened up books and I said, who? Here's Benjamin, Benjamin Banneker, here's Matthew Henson, who's other people who I never heard about. For you as a child, um, how did you learn about black history? Wow, so that's pretty interesting. So um, I would learn, uh, so I'm gonna tell you this story. I, I, we, we learned the, in school, you know, you get the history book and they tell you about, you know, the slaves and they tell you about, you know, what happens during, you know, uh, uh, um, you know a, sh a short period of history here in America. And it wasn't until I was about, I would say, 13. And I became an avid fan of hip hop music. And I would listen to KRS One. And KRS One had this album called um, Edutainment. And Edutainment was all about really teaching history through music. And I started to hear these different things happening in black history through song. And that really piqued my interest to really start doing some further um, studying and reading and listening to the books that he was referencing to. And that really opened my eyes to, to black history um, to its fullest extent. Because right. you know, obviously, you know, as a black man, um, a, a young black boy growing up in America, you know, people assume that you know your history, but somebody would have to you know, actually teach you the history and you'd have to read about it and, and really understand it. And um, my parents, um, my family's from Haiti, so, you know, English was a second language to me. So really reading the books um, or, or being referred to books by my parents wasn't really happening. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were really busy trying to learn the English language, you know, versus trying to study right. history. So history was something that came um, to me through music. And after I learned it through music, then the door was open and, and, and I, we ran from there. So over the years, as you did your research and your reading, did you happen to come across any personal heroes or, or favorites in black history? Well, I have a great number of personal heroes in, in black history, and one of them comes from, uh, there's a book written by um, Dr. Lerone Bennett. Dr. Lerone Bennett um, was significant in making sure that we had a black history month. Mm -hmm. and, um, Dr. Lerone Bennett wrote this book called Before the Mayflower. And before the Mayflower, Dr. Lerone Bennett talks about the Haitian Revolution. And he really depicts the story of Toussaint Louverture, who, um, you know, I pride as one of the, you know, forefathers of liberation when it comes to African people and, and, and liberate, uh, being one of the pioneers of, the key pioneer of liberating um, African people of slavery. And he happened to be from Haiti. Mm -hmm. So um, Toussaint Louverture was one of my heroes that I remember clearly in history. And Dr. Lerone Bennett, for his contributions and in really introducing that book to, you know, um, the, 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 the history world and really depicting um, black history from its very beginning to its uh, current day. Um, and then you have, you know, one of my favorites of all time, um, Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad Ali because of what he stood for, you know, and, and it's unfortunate that, you know, um, in our history, when we look at our history, oftentimes... Um, heroes aren't celebrated when they're alive. It's after they've passed on and people actually get a chance to understand their struggle, their plight, and why they fought the way they fought and why they um, spoke out about the issues that they spoke out about. And Muhammad Ali, 50 to 100 years from now, will always be known as the greatest of all time. And it wasn't because he won every fight, but it was simply because he claimed it. And he is a, a great figure in black history and to also to a lot of young black men to make them really feel really good about themselves. Because regardless if you're facing adversity or um, you're faced with a challenge, you can always overcome it by the power of the word, and the word is so powerful. And I would say, uh, the list can go on and on and on, but um, one of my key mentors and somebody who's been significant in my life was the first African-American congressman here of the state of New Jersey, which was Congressman Donald uh, M. Payne Sr. And, um, he lived a, 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 an integrous life and a life that, um, you know, he left a great legacy behind as for being one of our first African-American congressmen and not only doing work here in America, but going throughout the world and traveling back to Africa and really fighting um, a, a fight to really, you know, liberate people throughout the world. And you mentioned briefly uh, Toussaint Laurent Overture. Yes. Lafayette Middle School yes. took on his name. Yes. Yeah, school number six here is one of our... Um, 
the school elementary schools here in the city of Elizabeth and um, you know in the early uh, I would say uh, 2009 um, the Elizabeth Board of Education renamed um, Lafayette Toussaint Louverture Toussaint Louverture School number six because of its high Haitian concentration of um, high concentration of, of, of a Haitian population of students going there. And really um, just speaking to the community of the great contributions that not only um, Tucson Louverture has made to the world, but um, that Haitian Americans make to uh, the world every day. You know, and one of the key things about Tucson Louverture and how it's relevant, um, so relevant to black history, and, and it, it is it's black history all day, is that when he liberated Haiti and Haiti gained its independence, it was free black land right. for black people throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And people who were um, seeking freedom can go to Haiti and they can claim that as their home. Okay. We're going to ask you to take a pause. We're going to take a brief break. Sure. Okay. We're going to take a break and we'll be back with the second half of our city after these words. Thank you. Hello, I'm Mayor Chris Bolwage, and I would like to talk with you about recycling in the city of Elizabeth. Recycling is a great way to reduce our overall waste, which eventually ends up in landfills. It also helps conserve resources and energy, helping to protect our environment. For decades, the city of Elizabeth has picked up your recyclables from the curb every Wednesday, alternating between glass, plastic, and cardboard. And most of the recycled cans and bottles were shipped to facilities in China for repurposing. But recently, China has changed the rules and now, China will only accept a fraction of our material. The tightening of the market is forcing the city of Elizabeth to produce better quality recyclables. So here are some tips to help make the city recycle more responsibly. No more white plastic bags or stretchy plastic of any sort as they jam up the recycling sorter. Do not recycle dirty cardboard containers or greasy pizza boxes. And if you have electronics like TVs or computers, do not put them out at curbside with recyclables or your garbage. Please take them to our recycling center at 523 Trenton Avenue near the Gothels Bridge. Do not recycle pots, pans, small appliances, dishware, mirrors. Only recycle plastic containers if they have a number one or a number two at the bottom. Do not place styrofoam out with your recyclables. Also, make sure there is no plastic in the cardboard that you place at the curb. Styrofoam and non-recyclable plastic should be placed with your household garbage. Please recycle mixed paper, clean cardboard, rinsed aluminum, and metal cans, plastic bottles, and containers with a number one or a number two on the bottom, and clean glass bottles and jars. When placing your recyclables at the curb on Tuesday night, your cardboard should be tied or nestled and your plastic cans should be placed in an open container. For more tips and a handy pickup schedule, refer to your city recycling brochure or download the Recycling Coach app from your phone's app store or visit our website under Elizabeth Apps slash Elizabeth Recycles. For more information, Call 908-820-4150. Here in the city of Elizabeth, let's work together to recycle responsibly. Welcome back to the second half of our city. Once again, I'm Alonzo Jones, sitting in for Mayor Bowich, and I'm pleased to be joined here today with Mr. Stan Neron, and we're discussing some of the things going on around nationwide, and also locally for Black History Month. Stan, City Hall just hosted the annual pro uh, proclamation signing program on February 5th. Tell us uh, more about that event. Well, um, not only was there a proclamation signing, but we also did a, a flag raising at 12 noon here, and every year annually the NAACP and 
in the city of Elizabeth, we host a um, annual flag raising. So the flag raising happens at 12 noon, where we're joined by community residents and, and students and people throughout the community who come and celebrate um, these, the commemoration of, of Black History Month. And following that, at 4.30, we then did the proclamation signing, where we had um, a number of people attend. It's hosted by Councilwoman Patricia Perkins Augusti, who's actually the first African-American um, Council, African American councilwoman mm -hmm. um, uh, elected to city government here in the city of Elizabeth, and um, she hosted. It was a phenomenal event. We had an author, a young man who graduated uh, from Elizabeth Public Schools and then went on to Temple University, then Fordham University, right. and then was in the uh, played for the 49ers. And um, he then uh, recently came out with a book, um, Jihad Pretlow. He presented, so it was a great inspiration to all the youth that attended the event. We also had the civil rights um, director for the state of New Jersey, um, Rachel Weiner Apter. Um, she attended and um, spoke on her um, fight for civil rights and, and continuous um, progress that they're making throughout the state of New Jersey and not only here throughout the state but advocacy throughout the nation. As you talk about the proclamation sign, it's very interesting because the audience is a nice mixture of young and mature seniors, I want to say old. Seasoned. Seasoned. And it's nice, it's almost like an unofficial passing of the baton. Yes. Yeah. What's your feeling when you see that every year? Well, it's, it's definitely encouraging to understand that the foundation has been set by our seniors of, the, of, of, of our community. And then the youth get an opportunity to really learn from them and really just you know synergize and really feel that, that, that energy there because you hear from a plethora of presenters, speakers, elected officials, um, leaders throughout the community who get to inspire the youth. And you know, oftentimes you talk to the youth and they say, hey, I aspire to be you know, a, a doctor, I aspire to be an elected official, I aspire to be an athlete. And they get to hear from the actual athlete, right. the actual elected official, the actual doctor, lawyer, um, or entertainer that they, they aspire to be. And they see it firsthand and they hear the history. And it's always a, a great wealth of knowledge. So I think it's encouraging. And we know that hope has right. arrived when we see that happening. We also had um, Rodney Price Jr. who presented. And he presented um, to us in song. Mm -hmm. And he's a very talented uh, right. vocalist and musician um, who's also from the city of Elizabeth who came back to uh, you know, share his talents with the community. Now, as we talk about sharing talents, there's a lot of events going on throughout the month of February. Sure. But prior to that, that Saturday at the Ritz, there was a play. Yes, so um, uh, Charlotte and Kenny Brown. United Youth in New Jersey. Yeah, Charlotte and Kenny Brown, um, who run the United Youth in New Jersey, do a phenomenal job each and every year of producing an, an awesome play that deals with um, an era in black history. And this year was the Harlem Renaissance, the other Black Wall Street, which was an amazing, amazing play, an amazing production. So we're so proud right. of the work that they do. Now, you are a unique individual and very fortunate. You are a commissioner on the Board of Education. Yes, I am. And that is not something a lot of people years ago would take lightly because it's no. not an easy accomplishment. Who are some of the heroes or some of the people that you kind of remember helping you or years ago, some of the heroes in, here in Elizabeth? Well, I'm happy you said what you said. I, I don't take my position lightly. Right. I stand on the, on the backs and shoulders of giants who came before me, um, who laid the, the foundations, such as Chessie Roberts, um, Francis C. Smith, um, Charles Harris, Ella Hobson, Carolyn Cole, um, uh, Gil Chapman, who's wow. the first African-American um, elected uh, councilman here in the city, uh, Councilman Patricia Perkins Augusti, Councilman Bill Gallman, um, and so many others, uh, Catherine Centillion, um, who was a, 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 a uh, a, a strong advocate for, for social services here in our community. So I, I was influenced by such a, a, a large community and such mm -hmm. a large network of, of people who were there to always influence me. Um, you had uh, Clinton Taylor, who was a teacher, mm -hmm. Clinton Miller, another teacher, who was a great mentors to me, you know, who were always there to not only inspire myself, but really teach black history in schools and really just um, empower us. So, you know, the journey to becoming an elected official isn't just I woke up right. one day and said, hey, I want to be an elected official. It was my due diligence and duty to really give back um, to the community that fed me and poured so much into me to save my life. Now, the other day I was talking to some seniors and they were going through the yearbook. 
And in 54, all the women wrote in their yearbook secretary. And they said that's what they were told. A woman could be nothing but a secretary. Mm. You had a similar experience with your guidance counselor. Oh, yeah. So uh, my story, um, you know, Mr. Taylor was our, our um, he ran a club in the high school called the Pan-African Student Alliance. And it was basically uh, the Black Student Union, you know, that students can attend after school and really um, just really learn more about your history and more about your culture. And he introduced me to Howard University, you know, going to HBCU, which I was so excited about and wanted to really go to. And unfortunately, when I got to my guidance counselor and I really, you know, talked about, you know, this amazing, I had this, uh, these great ambitions, right? I wanted to be a doctor, I wanted to be a physical therapist. I went to guidance counselor and said, I want to go to college. So she looked at my grades and looked at my schedule and said, you know, chances of you really going to college aren't, you know, you getting accepted to all these schools is about the same, probably slim to none. Mm. So you probably should consider doing something that you're, you're, you're doing now because I see power mechanics on your schedule. Why don't you consider going to Lincoln Tech? And I read that as, you know, you basically just told me I can't go to college, you know, because right. here I am, I'm, I'm so excited, I'm, I'm ready to go, and, and, and here I'm being told, you know, don't consider going to any of these colleges because you probably won't get in, right. you know, consider doing something with your hands. And, you know, that particular year, I had just read the book, The Autobiography of Malcolm X. And we're talking some 30, 35 years prior to me, just being told to him, you know, as a child, that, you know, hey, you should do something with your with your hands and here again it was told to me so I think that once that happened you know one reason why I love Muhammad Ali is you know you get knocked down and you get right back up right. I know Muhammad Ali barely got knocked down but <laughs> at the end of the day um, you know true champions get knocked down because he got knocked down for what he believed in right right but when he came back he came back with vengeance and people understood why he stood for what he stood for right. but um, you know I eventually you know there's there's a uh, a unique piece to being told no. And you have to have a real good support group around you. And at the time, I had a great group of friends who are still my friends to this day, we're lifelong friends. And I had options, right? I could have went, I could have strayed to the far left and, and decided not to do anything good and, 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 and got with the bad crowd, or I could have navigated to the group of young men that I'm still with today and said, you know, who encouraged me to go to college and encouraged me not to right. give up. So long story short, I come back to school um, after a couple months of deliberating this thought of what right. I was just told, and I meet an African American counselor who says to me, Miss uh, Desiree Pickett, we'll never forget her, and she says to me, don't listen to none of that nonsense. Whatever school you want to go to, you go ahead and apply. I was still intimidated, so I didn't apply to Howard University, right. but Kane University called me and I went there and my life was forever changed. Now as it pertains to Elizabeth, and I know we always say it's a short month, do you know of any other events that might be going on that someone might want to take part in as far as Black History Month? Absolutely. So we have the African American Heritage um, Parade Committee that's hosting their ball on February 16th. Um, uh, it's coming up very soon and, uh, you know, tickets are still available for that event. It's a wonderful ball celebrating um, Black history and Black culture. Um, we also have a plethora of events happening through our Elizabeth Board of Education. Mm -hmm. If you go on our website, you'll find a lot of great events happening. We have a great Black History Month celebration happening on February 21st at our board meeting um, taking place at the Charles Harris School, um, which uh, it was a school recently named um, after Charles Harris, which is our Edison Annex, um, our freshman academy. So we'll be having a, a wonderful uh, Black History Month celebration um, at the school celebrating the history of, of, of black Americans and, and, and Africans throughout the world. Do you ever have a chance to go out and talk to some students and inspire them? And all the time, all the time. Whenever I get the opportunity, I go out and I, and I tell them my story and I share stories with them and I encourage them to always reach for the highest and their best in their lives. And, and you know, it's all right. students, you know, and I think that I particularly serve as a great role model to young men of color, you know, who, um, you know, often told they can't make it or struggle and, 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 and find a lot of challenges and obstacles. But, you know, Frederick Douglass once said, mm -hmm. um, where there is no struggle, there's no right. progress. And, you know, um, struggling is part of life. Challenges is part of life. And you, you got to go through something in order to make it. Now, you've traveled abroad. Have you ever been to Africa? I have. I've been to Egypt. 
Wow. Yeah, I've been to Egypt, which I consider to be medication to the soul. I think everybody should go and really understand the, the foundations of civilization and where it yeah. all began. So you were born in Brooklyn, yes. raised in Elizabeth. Yes. Did you ever sit in school and say, one day I'm going to Egypt? Never. I never thought that would happen. So, you know, things in, in life happen for a reason because they always say, you know, um, you know, God doesn't make a mistake right in your life. And right. he orders your steps and he orders your journey. And, um, you know, not having gone to Howard University, I don't, you know, I, I, don't, I don't wallow in my pity or, 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 or um, regret it. I just realized that, you know, the path that I took was, was the path that I should have taken. And I probably would have never ended up in Egypt or Greece or traveled the world and, and then uh, embark in the career that I've embarked in. I probably wouldn't be back here. Right. So, you know, and, and I'm proud and happy to be back to have been contributing to our community. So before we wrap up, I just want you to take a, a minute and think. Uh, somewhere along the line, you have made history here in Elizabeth. Um, as the assistant director here in the Department of Health and Human Services, you're probably the first male, African-American male to sit in that seat. And then also on the Board of Education, you served as president. Yes, I did. So you were probably somewhere along the line. The story well, I happened that. to be the first black male president of the Board of Education. Okay. And it happened to happen during um, President Barack Obama's tenure on his, uh, well, it was on his way out. And did you, did you happen to go to his inauguration? I did. I was uh, fortunate enough. So, you know, quick story about President Barack Obama. Um, you met him? No, <laughs> I, came, I came close to meeting him, but I never actually met him. Okay. But I worked on his campaign, okay. so that was good enough for me. I worked on his campaign, came very close in his presence, watched him speak on several occasions um, at, because of working on his campaign. Right. So we were always at his rallies um, that happened here in the state of New Jersey. But in 2008, when I worked on his campaign, it actually inspired me to run for office wow. because I never thought I would run for office. And that really, um, you know, pushed all my buttons and said, you know, you can do this and you can really make it happen. Because he did the impossible. Because yeah. nobody believed he would become the president of the United States. Well, I hope you don't stop where you are. Maybe one day you can be president and I can say, hey, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. So as the commissioner and also for the uh, Department of Health and Services, do you have a, a slogan or something you want to say to young folks to inspire them or some closing remarks? Never give up. That's good, right? Never give up. Um, you know, regardless what your hopes and dreams are, um, just keep telling yourself that you're going to do it, you're going to do it, you're going to do it. Write it down and make it plain. It's so important to write down your goals and your dreams and your aspirations and just never give up. And add uh, Muhammad Ali to that if you don't mind. Yes. If you fall down, it's a get up. You got to get right back up. You know, champions fall down, but they get right back up. And that's what makes a great champion. And you can become the greatest of all time. Well, thank you. I guess it's you probably something you heard before, but you yourself, you are a champion and uh, don't take it for granted. You made history, you've done some great things and it's not over. Some more. The best is yet to come. And before we end this interview, I have to commend you on all the history that you've made and the inspiration that you've been right. to our community and, and our children and, and, the, and the impact that you've had on my life. Because we watch you <laughs> develop and you came before I did. And, and, and I watch you as not only um, a great public servant, but also an entertainer. And you inspired me. So thank you for all your contributions. Thank you. For some reason I felt old when you said that, but thank you. Hey, you, well, you know, <laughs> you, you're not old, but you're seasoned and, and you came before me. So I you know, appreciate we're, we're, we're close in age. And, and um, you know, I mean, you got to give credit where credit is due. And when you see great, um, you know, greatness happening, I remember, you know, we would ask you to come and, and help with the kids. And you were like, yeah, sure, I will always do this. And, you know, um, you know, you look at somebody that makes it on television like yourself and, and, and you know, you just think they're untouchable and you right. never gave anybody here in this community that feeling. You always let them know that you were still part of them and they were still part of you. Well, thank so you. we salute you. All right. Appreciate that. Thank you for joining us on this segment of Our City. I'm pleased to be joined by Mr. Stan Neron. I want everyone to have a safe, wonderful and great week and enjoy Black History Month. Thank you. <laughs>